Hey, thanks for joining me in my shop here. I'm going to be doing two things to this radio uh, this morning. One is putting a power cord on it, and the other is trying to find out why it's not receiving a shortwave radio. The answer to that could have been could be as simple as there wasn't any shortwave to receive uh, when I was doing the test. But uh, we'll use a few instruments to uh, prove that out. So let's do the cord here. Oh, that's right. I'm going to reverse two capacitors that I installed, and shame on me, I started working on two capacitors at once, and that's all it took for me to get them mixed up. So, uh, thank you very much to those viewers who spotted the error of my ways. While I was doing it, I thought I was being uber careful couldn't make a mistake. So this tape I put on there just to flag myself so I wouldn't forget. And uh, that seems to have worked. So this should be a really easy matter of unsoldering two of them. Oh no, both at the same time again? Yeah. warmer day today here. It's about 4 degrees outside. 4 degrees centigrade, that'd be about uh, 40, I guess, 38, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. But boy, it is windy. These capacitors are relatively minor capacitors in the scheme of things. One of them, the one I'm affecting right now, is just the auxiliary input to this radio. control on this radio has only two settings. The switch at the back here. Thank you once again, those of you who noticed my mistake. There we go. Okay, now on to the power cord. So I'm going to put the short cord on it here. It's an unpolarized plug.
original. The original uh, cord got caught under there. Looks like there should be a grommet in here holding it, which I don't have any of. Just have to be careful with uh, replacing it when I when I reinstall it. Now, what about? Strain relief. Um, I can do the knot thing. That's not much, though. Still, still shake around. Um, boy, there's just nothing in there to uh, put a tie wrap on. Well, maybe there is. There's a screw down here. Screw right here. Maybe this one. This one's out in the open a bit. Do the trick. Let me get a tie wrap here. down in there. Frayed fabric, though. this it's a little hard to it's very hard to bend
I'll shrink that with my uh, blower here. Where's the blower? Okay, gotta hunt down the blower here. Okay. Just put some paper there to protect it. Uh, I'm never quite sure just which one of these is, <laughs> is the antenna. So I'm thinking we'll just try every one of them. We're ready to go. Still no antenna connected right now. Start with what I'm pretty sure is the AM band. So I'm just keeping an eye on the lights here. Since I did do something with the power cord. All set. Still can put lights in up here. I'm not going to because they. Uh, I will eventually, but at the moment I won't because they interfere with the video a little bit. Nothing compares to our fantastic eyes. What did I just hear on the radio? When you're inside a well lit room, you're among 500 lux of light in a well lit room. When you go outside, it's 100,000 lux of light, and yet. From our eyes' point of view, it's barely a change. That's how good our eyes are. So. Now we're just on the loop antenna here. We stop the voltage a bit, so we're at 110. working okay. Next band, I'm not sure which one it is. Let me let me just find that out. I'm just gonna run and look at the cabinet here. Just a sec. Okay, 
So that's the 31 meter band. At this time of day, there's not going to be anything there. So we'll go right up to the 19 meter band. There might be something there today. This time. Tapping the antenna here. Boy, that's not very good. Hmm. It's not good at all. Zero. Pretty sure I have it on a proper proper lug back there. If it's the switch that's acting up here. Oh, that sounds a little better. This is the uh, 20, uh, 25 meter band. Oh, it's picking up. Just going slack here. No, no, no. You can feel the <coughs> string tightening up as you get towards the, the end here sound you hear is the string popping through here. You can actually see the expansion in the spring. So the uh, tension on the string is different. It's different at different ends of the band. You know, it's a combination of climbing on the spool too here. seems to be barely receiving. Huh. Let's try the next band down even though there's really... There's really no chance of picking up anything. I shouldn't say that because there's always always uh, some broadcasters in North America. Usually religious ones. See what I mean? Speaker's rattling away. Okay. 
So it's receiving okay on this band. The other ones it may not be receiving simply because of bad alignment. So really alignment is the next order of the day on this radio before I do anything more with it. Very good. Now I'm going to have to uh, study up on the alignment procedure and uh, get familiar before I start. Okay, so I'm just reading over the uh, alignment instructions and right off the bat it says cathode ray alignment is the preferable method, meaning use an oscilloscope. Instructions on the schematic. So I look on the schematic and down here it says oscillograph connections. Vertical to this terminal, ver a vertical high to this terminal, vertical low to the chassis. So it means ground to the chassis and the signal line should be connected to this terminal uh, and part of the print is missing here. So, but where would they want that to go? Well, they would want that to go somewhere where it picks up the AVC voltage. And uh, how can you find a spot like that? Well, first of all, you can spot this dot here, which actually looks more like an asterisk. Hard to see the little dot there. I'm pretty sure that's the symbol that this actually is referring to. Now, how do I know this is AVC? Well, it's coming out of the detector. Okay, and if you just follow the, the line across, great big fat resistor there, follow it up goes through the secondary side of this IF and works its way all the way to the grid. The grid of the IF continues along here, comes up, and this is really hard to see, around, and into the tube and into the one to third grid of the uh, detector oscillator mixer tube. And that's just the kinds of things you want to apply an AVC voltage to, the grids of these two tubes. So for sure, that's going to be the point right there. Easy to find. It's right on the end of the, of the uh, volume control. So very easy to find. Why do they want you to use an oscillogra oscillograph to do this? Oscillogram, oscilloscope, as we call it these days. Um, well, very high input impedance. So you know your uh, oscilloscope has a high impedance even back back when this was uh, current. And uh, just looking for the date on this radio quickly. Don't see one. I think this is in the 40s. But still, voltmeters were still relying on current from the circuit to drive the pointer up and down. So they are still fairly low impedance. Look, when you see these kinds of resistors, 2.2 mega ohms, here's another one up here, 2.2 mega ohms, uh, as a high impedance circuit here. So, 500,000 across here. So, if you took a regular voltmeter and stuck it on there, you would pull this voltage down as it drew some current. Your oscillograph won't. Well, neither will a modern vacuum tube voltmeter. Modern? <laughs> yeah. Relatively modern. So, I'm going to use my. Uh, voltmeter here to do this. It's a DC voltage, so it's perfect for so that meter. Now, tip this up. Connect in a clip lead here. the point where we want to go. Clip this on here so when I put the radio down it doesn't get knocked off. There we are.
going to want me to hook up the signal generator in there too, probably. So I'll have to get under it again. And this has to go on the ground. Maybe that'll do it. Now, good enough for the voltmeter. 15 volt scale. Let's see what else it says here. By the way, the uh, bands on this radio are 9 megahertz, 11 megahertz, and 15 megahertz, not 6. I thought the low band was uh, 6 megahertz, which is a little surprising to hear something at this time of day. 9? You know what? You can get stuff in the afternoon on 9 megahertz. So. Now, output meter. If that method's used, put it on the voice coil. I'm not doing that. Test oscillator. For all alignment operations, connect the low side of the test oscillator to the ground terminal and keep the output as low as possible to avoid AVC action. Well, well then, then I'm not monitoring the AVC voltage here. Because at this point also is the audio. Huh. Well, let's carry on with this meter. It still is high impedance, so it's probably a high impedance location to get sound, not way out here at the speaker coil where it's really, really low, low impedance. So we'll we'll stick with what we're doing. We'll just change this from DC to AC. Make it a little more sensitive. Okay, so I got egg on my face on that ABC story, but that's how it goes. Yeah. Calibration scale on the indicator drive chord drum. No one knows what to call these things. Uh, the tuning dial is fastened in the cabinet, cannot be used for reference during the alignment. Okay, that's right, so I can't read the dial values. So use that, that's fine. Come on, tell me where to hook up the oscillator. Must be over here. Test oscillator, connection to receiver, control grid of the 6SK7. Okay, control grid of the 6SK7, control grid of the... So we start with partway into the radio, then we move back to the 6SA7. But you know what? This radio is already relatively aligned, and it's working. So might be able to cheat on this. Could, could just put it into the 6SA7 and uh, go from there. Control grid of the 6SA7. Okay. 6SA7. The control grid Screen grid. That looks like it there. It's really hard to read these diagrams. They are so small and tiny. What other one could it be? It's got to be that one. So that'd be pin one, two, three, four, five. Pin five of the six SA seven. Okay, let's go here. Pin five of the six SA seven. That's right up here. say pin 5, didn't I? Pin 5, right there. Did I say pin 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 5. Okay, unless this radio is ridiculously out of line, out of alignment.
alignment, which it cannot be. Now, I'm suggesting this should be connected to the ground terminal at the back. set now. I think we're not set. There we go. Don't think that's going to come off now. Scale. I have to use a mirror on that. Calibration scale is on the back here. Therefore, calibration scales attached to the back from which I don't know which is mounted on the gain. The setting of the gain condenser is read on the scale, which is calibrated in degrees. <coughs> Excuse me. The correct setting of the gain in degrees for each alignment frequency is given in the table. As a first step in the RF alignment, check that the position of the drum. Check the position of the drum. 180 degree mark on the drum scale must be in a vertical position when the plates are fully meshed. Drum is held to the shaft by means of two set screws, which must be tightened securely when the drum is in the correct position. Well, let's turn this. Uh, oh, you know what? Let me set up my uh, close up camera to do the trick for us. So there's the view of the scale. Just got this wire in the way, which I'll move out of the way. Here we are. We've got a parallax here. Not too bad. Let's go all the way to one way here. Loose string not helping. I would say the 180 is actually off, but you know, that can be camera angle stuff. If you look at this surface here on the capacitor, there's, and that looks straight up to me. Oops, this is where it's actually stopping. Frankly, I don't think I want to try loosening those hold down screws and stuff like that. Call that close enough. Um, and what I could do is I could bend the pointer in there. Fix up some kind of pointer. <laughs> 